And I think a big question, and I ask this next one because students have asked, how do you do the research, right? Like, where are the records? Uh, that's been one that's come up a lot with my undergrad students, for example. So I, I turn it to you since the projects are so diverse and all equally important in their own way. How do you conduct the research? What are the archival secondary sources that you're using to resituate the conversation on a family when there aren't, like Hillary's pointed out, there aren't a lot of records on them. So how do you do it? And I open up to you know the floor. Hillary, do you want to just keep going in our order? I like following you on my screen. <laughs> so one of the things I will say is uh, some advice I got from my advisor, Heather Williams. Mm -hmm. If you're not asking where are Black families and where mm -hmm. are Black people, you won't find them. <laughs> you won't see them. Yeah. And so for me, think about the family and how families are interpreted within the church family. There's nuclear families, there's families by choices. I start off with the family histories, the census records, but more importantly, those church histories, mm. those black newspapers, the voices in which African Americans are contributing themselves. Right. But I always ask the question, the first thing is where what is the black experience? Who are these? And I start with centering the questions mm. around them and develop my research plan around that. But if I'm not asking that question, I think this is the stumbling block I get with students and individuals, the long haul research <laughs> that is needed right. to reconstruct these families. There's nothing that's gonna keep you going. You mm -hmm. have to have your clear research questions and agenda and focus on them in order to do that long, complicated history. Very yeah, I like this idea of reconstruction, you know, small r reconstruction of these families is really the, the beginning here and what has to happen. I mean, it's such a contrast in my first book, I studied primarily white families and the difference between going to the archive and requesting a collection of family papers and you get this like very neatly boxed up set of letters. Somebody's done the little ge genealogical background on the family that comes in its own little folder. I mean, everything is like delivered to you on a platter <laughs> for some of those families. And then now shift as I was doing to look at those who are coming right out of slavery. Uh, it, I mean, it's just a completely different process. And I mean, everything that Hillary says is um, you know, I was nodding in agreement here. Um, for me, in terms of sources, because I was um, dealing with those who went into Union Army lines, military records were the crucial source base. And I was very much inspired by some of the historians who came before me, um, you know, writing on in this general area, particularly those who worked on the Freedmen and Southern Society Project right. at Maryland. I mean, I, I can't, I can't um, thank that project more and applaud them more for what they've done to help us see what is in military records. And for me, the reconstruction process involved um, following somebody through their records and picking up any hint of family and then following them as well. I mean, it was a pretty intricate um, process at times that required spreadsheets and <laughs> <laughs> diagrams on paper to try to you know, figure this all out. Oh my God, the yeah, the spreadsheets and the diagrams of the family tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I try to visualize this. Um, but but I will say that, uh, you know, the military records, even though they raise all the problems of how they come filtered through the pens of these white clerks um, in the army and, you know, are not always, are mostly never, um, you know, even the voices of, um, you know, newly freed people expressed in them, they still document a lot of actions and they document relationships. Yes. It's very crucial. So I'd like to kind of piggyback on, but also um, start off with um, kind of a strong statement. Um, for, for, for a long time, we've been told the records don't exist about Black families, and it's just mm -hmm. simply not true. Um, there is a serious silence in the archives. Absolutely, I don't want to dismiss that, like Amy said, you don't find things as neatly tied together because for so very long we've had 
intentional and um, unintentional decisions made not to collect some of this family history. But the military records do have a wealth of information. Yes. And again, not to dismiss that some of the newly free people um, are, are, are not always going to be uh, re uh, registered by name, um, that is going to be more difficult. But you can use many of the Civil War era uh, official records uh, through the government mm -hmm. to find not only the families of sailors and soldiers, but you can create whole, recreate um, neighborhoods, uh, mm -hmm. far and deep relationships. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of this comes from the pension files uh where affidavits are given and you can start to again with your spreadsheets and your uh, genealogical charts uh, start to figure out who is who and again the, the strength of the family is, is in these uh, these records in that way um mm -hmm. but just a, a quick example uh one of the uh, soldiers from the 27th is from akron ohio and he's a barber and I was looking for what did he do during the war and, you know, how, how, what was his experience? Because going in, I was thinking I was going to see accounts from battle or something like that. And, and instead, what I, what I was able to do was uh, recreate all of the black barbers in Akron, Ohio in the late 19th century and where they lived and did they get along with them or not. And I mean, they're, they're, that is not military history. Right. I mean, that that's a way, though, to get about uh, get around uh, when we've been told that this evidence doesn't exist. So in addition to, to what both Hillary and Amy are saying, yeah, there's real difficulty and you, you have to have some really good questions before you go after um, I like that uh, front porch. Right. Kind of history. I, I think that's very important. Uh, people doing African-American genealogy uh, have done some incredible work. In we should include them more in what we do. But the evidence is there. I think in the long run, as Civil War historians, we have to be much more upfront about the fact that for years we've chosen not to look at that, not mm -hmm. to look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah I, th I think, I mean, this is, you all have made some very powerful statements. And I say this particularly to graduate students. Uh, Kelly actually brought up a struggle I had. Um, when I was going and, you know, Kelly and I have talked when I was finishing grad school about some of these issues and Hillary knows them well, like I went into the pension records wanting them to talk about the 13th, 14th, 15th, right? Like these powerful, you know, political moments about suffrage. They're talking, at least in the records I haven't looked at, issues of un unemployment, underemployment, uh, domestic violence, you know, addictions, uh, family discord. Uh, various disabilities, you know, the, all these complexities, and it kept centering, and I remember my advisor, Leslie Schwann, being like, what are the sources saying to you, Holly? And I was like, you know, what I'm really seeing here is a lot of family tension, a lot of family anger about the meaning of the war um, and the ways in which maybe the federal government is and is not recognizing their hardships, um, because you all bring up great points. On one hand, the records are racist, right? And then it's, it, it, the voices come very clearly, particularly in the assessments of the, the census when they would say things even gendered negatively about women keeping house and not acknowledging the, the important role that women are playing in the homes, but also in the pensions, which would make negative uh, examinations of, of the women connected to these veterans and soldiers. Can I but, add to you all uh, use pension records? The mm -hmm. Freeman's Bureau record yes. Yes. is what I always go through, too, because that's another way for reconstructing families. Yes. And it wasn't the classified records. Mm -hmm. It was the unclassified, unfiltered letters. Right. And records around death. Mm -hmm. That's where you found other things, too. So even looking at Reconstruction era documents mm -hmm. to go oh, back yes. into the war. Yes. Because in order to apply to be a teacher, you have to justify your employment <laughs> in your history. Right. Finding children who were there. So there's, a, I think there's a whole host of records that sometimes it's just the imagination. Yeah. And asking that these people's lives matter and are centered into the narrative. And I think well, all of us really do that, whether it's right. pensions or there, but we take the time and effort 
and overcome the noise uh -huh. of our profession saying you're not going to find these people. Uh -huh. 